Okay, so we are going to talk uh, in this video about Fourier um, cosine and sine integrals. Okay, Fourier cosine and sine integrals. Okay, so let's go <clears throat> and have an insight regarding uh, this. We can define Fourier cosine and sine integral expansions. Okay, so only only like cosine only or sine only. Okay, expansions for functions defined on the half line now take care of the word line before we was we were using interval now it's half line in a manner completely uh, analogous to Fourier cosine and sine expansions of functions defined on half interval that's right do you remember Fourier cosine and sine expansions that I have explained in the previous videos they are going to be similar to the definition of cosine Fourier cosine and sine integrals on half line in this case okay so suppose that we have f of x a function called f of x is defined on the right part which is x larger than or equal to zero okay extend this function to an even function we call it f of e on the real line so we are like as if that we are having <coughs> This odd function, uh, uh, like this function here, from zero to whatever it is larger than zero, and then we are going to extend it to other, um, to the other part, or across the vertical line as a mirror from using the uh, uh, the vertical line. Then we are going to have so extend this function on an even function to an even function f e on the real line. So as if that we are having something like this, where, where this function f e, which is the even function, is going to equal what exactly f of x when this x is larger than or equal to zero, and it equals to f of minus x for x less than zero. If this is zero, then we are going to talk about the function. <coughs> the value of the function is going to be f of minus x if this independent variable is less than zero, right? okay so now this reflects the graph which is the function for x larger than or equal to zero back across the vertical line so this is the vertical line and this is going to be reflected or going to be uh, reflected yes on this vertical line vertical axis to a function fe so now we have like even function Do you remember the even function that I have explained before defined on the entire line so this is on the entire line now because this even function is an even, this Fe is even function, its Fourier coefficients are, so our Fourier coefficients are going to be, this is a omega, equals to 1 over pi from minus infinity to infinity, the function itself, which is what? Even function, times cosine omega z, which is what? Even function. So even times even, and it is under integral from minus l to l or minus pi minus uh, infinity to infinity then we are going to have double of the integral from zero to infinity of f of z cosine omega z dz right so this is the first in the uh, uh, coefficient or the integral coefficient first integral coefficient a omega okay now let's go and get the b omega right so a omega already we have obtained it it is going to be something like like this remember this is to remember what we what we have explained in the previous video a omega equals to 1 over pi from minus infinity to infinity f of z cosine omega z dz and b omega equals to 1 over pi from minus pi to uh, sorry um, from minus infinity to infinity f of z sine omega z dz okay so b omega is going to equal 1 over pi the integration from minus infinity to infinity f which is the uh, even function in this case f e of z even times what the actually here this is sine sine omega z as as it is here it should be sine not cosine maybe it's a mistake in the book or something so it is odd function right so even times odd it gives us zero without thinking too much right so the Fourier integral f the even function of x contains only 
cosine terms, right? So because this is going to go away, right? And then we are, we are going to end up with the coefficient of a, uh, this coefficient a omega. So we're going to end up with cosine omega uh, z. Since f e of x equal to f of x, this is true for x larger than or equal to zero, this expansion may be thought of as a cosine expansion of f of x. That's very similar to what we have said before. On the half line, x larger than or equal to zero. That's right. It's very similar to the uh, Fourier series. Just be, and instead of using the the summation, we are using yes the integral line. That's it. Okay. Okay. Let's go to the next part, which is this leads us to define the Fourier cosine integral now of the function f of x on this interval, which is x larger than or equal to zero. Okay. Remember that we are talking about something here. That's something from 0 on, positive. To be, it is going to be like this. The integration from, yes, 0 to infinity, a omega cosine omega x d omega, in which this a omega, it is going to be what? In terms of the d z, it is going to be 2 over pi from 0 to infinity, the function, but we are going to use our parameter z here, Okay, because it is for the coefficient that we're going to use cosine omega z dz okay then we are going to obtain this constant of the integral and then we're going to multiply it by cosine omega x this is going to be the Fourier integral cosine coefficient we call it cosine coefficient okay so in a similar fashion if we have done this for the cosine why we do not do it for exactly for the sine Similarly, we can reflect the graph f of x through the origin to obtain an odd function, f o, which is f odd, defined for all real x. Imagine that we are having something like this, and we have this is our function. We're reflecting it on the origin, so it is going to give us something like like this. Consider it like this. Okay. Now the Fourier coefficients of the Fourier expansion of this odd function. Okay, our odd function that we are assuming that it's odd function now on the line R, take care, we are talking about line, not interval anymore. Okay, so it is going to be B omega is going to be 1 over pi from minus infinity to infinity. The odd function of Z times sine omega Z. It is what? This is exactly odd times odd. It is going to give us even function. So this integral work work with us and we can reduce it to be from 0 to infinity 2 over pi f of z sine omega z d z okay so you should ask me where is a omega here we should like calculate it before b omega right but the point is no need to calculate it because it's going to be zero that's 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 clear because in our case we are going to have f of z to be what odd right and we are going to multiply by what cosine omega z right so this is even so even times odd it is going to vanish so this is why the a coefficient is going to disappear in this case so in this case we can say or state this four-year expansion of the odd function x on the whole line we're talking about line remember not interval contains just what sine terms it is sine terms let's clean everything to see it we're going to have only sine sine terms here. Okay. This is going sorry, this is here. The sine terms. Okay. So this means that we are going to have the function to be represented by sine integrals. Okay. Furthermore, this odd function it is going to equal to f of x for x larger than or equal to zero because we are talking about this part, right? The positive part. That's right. Now let's put it in like something like a theorem, for example. We define the Fourier sine integral of the function on x larger than or equal to zero as the integration from zero to infinity of b omega times sine omega x d omega, where this b omega is going to be what? The coefficient of integral. We call it Fourier integral sine coefficient. It equals to 2 over pi from 0 to infinity f of z sine omega z d 
z. Okay, that's very easy and similar to what we have done before for the Fourier series. And based on this, we can put our theorem for convergence. It's going to be like 14.2 uh, in this case. Do you remember 14.1? the convergence of the Fourier integral that I have explained before okay if you look to it it is going to be useful for us to get the convergence of sine and cosine Fourier integral so just to recall what we have said before here for the um, convergence of the Fourier integral we said before if it's f is piecewise Okay. First of all, we are supposing that f of x is defined for all real x on that. Uh, the integration, it's absolutely integrable. As we said, it is going to converge. Suppose that f is piecewise smooth on every interval from minus l to l. Remember that we were talking about what? Interval. Okay. And then here, minus l to l for l larger than 0. Then, okay, the at any x... The Fourier integral, okay, that we have mentioned before, this is an equation, of f converts to this, like half, half of f of x from right plus f of x from left, okay, from the left side. Okay, we, this is for the integral. Now we want it to put it for the uh, Fourier sine or cosine integral. Then, next page, we are going to talk about the convergence of Fourier integral. This is just to recall what we have said before, okay? So our, our main target is this one now which is convergence of Fourier cosine and sine integrals. So we are going to say the same wording here, but with little change. So we're going to say, suppose f of x is defined for x larger than or equal to 0, and it is piecewise smooth, I already explained it many times, on every interval from 0 to L, we are talking about the positive part, for L larger than 0. This is as if the real line now, we're talking about the real line. Assume that our integral from 0, take care, 0 to infinity, okay, our integral from 0 to infinity, okay, converges, means that it has a value at the end. Then at each x, at each x larger than 0, the Fourier cosine and sine integral is going to be exactly, it is the same, it is similar half of f x from right plus f of x from left half of it and then we're going to add this part here which is further the cosine integral converges to f of zero so we're going to substitute with zero approaching it from the right at x equal to zero okay so at x equal to zero we're going to approach it from right okay at x equal to 0 and the sine integral converges to what? 0 at x equal to 0 at this particular point at x equal to 0 we're going to find that our sine integral converges to what? 0 okay we're going to see this in the next example that we are going to have okay thank you now and see you in the next um, video where that we're going to have one example that is going to be explained Thank you and see you in the next video.